The topic that we are going to discuss today is intellectual property rights. It's going to be a brief lecture on uh, the different types of uh, intellectual property rights, which is also in short known as IPR. So intellectual property rights are important in the creation and management of digital library because you know they uh, they deal with the ownership ownership and control of the materials that you are likely to include that you want to include in your digital library collection so this is uh, one kind of uh, legal framework or law uh, having its own uh, terms concepts and so on so in this uh, lesson, we'll try to focus on some of the key principles and terms involved in this uh, uh, law, which is called intellectual property right or uh, IPR that relates to digital content. So in the process, we'll also try to, in this, I mean, uh, subsequent lecture, we also try to see uh, some of the other issues uh, pertaining to these, uh, I mean, some more details on the ones that are directly related to the libraries as well. So, this intellectual property, when we say intellectual property, it is a very general term used to describe the things that are produced by people. The people produce things using their mental faculty or using their creativity I mean, there are things they create, okay, they create. So those created things are what we call using their mental faculty. The things that are born out of it is what we call intellectual property. So intellectual property is not limited to uh, a few printed books or a few industrial usage. It has a wide range of uh, things that covers, I mean, starting from, uh, uh, fictions, poetry, the computer softwares, designs, right? fashion designs, I mean, building designs, and so on. Then products, process of making products, industrial process. All right. So it includes the material that you are likely to make it available, I mean, in your digital library. If when the moment you are thinking of a digital library, it is possible that almost everything that you are going to keep in your digital library in some way or the other is going to require or is going to be, uh, I mean, it's going to have some relationship with intellectual property rights. Therefore, it is important to understand what is intellectual property rights. So, things such as ebooks, journal articles, personal papers, scientific data, photographs and illustration. These are the things that we normally find, data types that we find in the digital libraries. And all of it are covered under intellectual property right. So in this law, in IPR, the uh, intellectual output is treated as a piece of property. Okay, the intellectual output is treated as a piece of property which can be owned by anyone or which can which which can be transferred okay where the ownership can be transferred to from one person to another or from one person to a company or from a company to a person okay so the moment it is treated any intellectual output is treated as a property then that also implies that it can be transferred so what the uh, I mean, uh, IPR tends to achieve the main objective is that by protecting these intellectual and creative uh, products, okay, as a form of property, it allows the creators to gain something out of what they have created. Okay, you know, it's not that somebody. I mean, I mean, it's in. I mean, it should be injustice if somebody keep on making things and uh, has been taken away by. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, suppose I make a product and that product with or without my uh, you know, consent is being marketed by some other company and I don't get anything. Okay. As a creator, I get nothing. 
So that kind of misuse or that kind of, you know, uh, injustice in order to avoid that kind of injustice, intellectual property rights is being put in place. So it also enables not only we gain out of the uh, our intellectual output, but it also uh, enable us to, to be identified as a creator. If I create something, if I make something, I should be uh, acknowledged or I should be given the due credit, which uh, I mean, as the creator, the person who made that. Okay. So intellectual property right is a term used to describe the legal rights which the law provides to control, control and protect this intellectual property. So it gives honor the, uh, the exclusive right to do certain things. If I own it or if I create it, then it gives me some authority or some rights to do certain things with the uh, property which I own. Okay. So even if something has to be done, it has to be done with my permission as a person who holds an intellectual property, right? So some of the uh, features of intellectual property rights is that uh, uh, the process by which rights are created and recognized also varies depending on the type of intellectual property concerned. You know, it's not uh, one law for all, for all kinds of uh, property, intellectual property. Every intellectual property are treated slightly differently. Okay, So in some cases, uh, there are... Uh, uh, formal registration is necessary okay, for uh, the intellectual uh, property output uh, to be, uh, I mean, to own that intellectual property right or to have that right, a formal registration is necessary for some, uh, some, some kind of this property before the rights can be granted. Only when you register it in, the, in your uh, country's uh, IPR uh, office, that administrative office, then only you can own it, you have the right to own it. So uh, these kind of things like patents or designs and trademarks, these kind of uh, intellectual properties needs registration. Otherwise, there's going to be conflicting, uh, conflicting, you know, uh, claim of ownership. Therefore, the one who registers first usually owns it, right? So the details of, uh, again, the, there is a country to country variation, you know, exactly how an intellectual property right is implemented or applied depends on one country. I mean, differs from one country to another country, not in a, a huge way, but in a, a small uh, local variation okay you will find some small local variation will be there from country to country so this is because that a country has its own set of intellectual property laws uh, for example right the amount of time a copyright will last how long will a copyright last with the uh, owner or the author that varies from country to country okay so uh, or the the process of submitting a patent, okay, and the registration, uh, how it has to be done, the, what is the process, and how long that patent or the uh, yeah the patent uh, lies or the is owned by the uh, person who registered it. it uh, that kind of thing differs from country to country. So in spite of all these uh, differences, okay, the framework or the uh, the yes or the I mean the the framework under which all these countries are having intellectual property laws or rights uh, is more or less the same okay it is like one design in which there are slight modifications so uh, this is because there are a number of uh, international treaties that come countries comes together and then they try to agree upon some common frameworks, common structures, okay? Based on that, they, they make their own uh, intellectual property laws related to intellectual property rights. Therefore, the common framework is more or less the same. 
Now, what are those international treaties where the countries comes together? So some of them, uh, we I have put up some of them. One is the Berne Convention of protecting protection of literary and artistic work way back in 1886. Okay, that is uh, quite quite a long time ago. Then we also have the Paris Convention for the protection of industrial property, 1883. So this is how, I mean, the uh, how old intellectual property right is about. But in many countries, intellectual property right is something new. They have heard it recently and they have implemented and passed a lot recently. It's because that many countries, initially many countries do not participate in these international treaties. Only after more and more countries are participating in the moment, I mean, as they participate, they pass their law in their country. So these two treaties that we mentioned in 86 and 83 are uh, administered or looked after by the United Nations. Uh, a body which is under United Nations uh, we, that is called the uh, WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO, which is set up in uh, 1973. So these, the treaties are looked after by a UN body, which is called World Intellectual Property Organization, which is found in 1974. Now, the minimum standards contained in these convents are, conventions are incorporated into the part of the World Trade Agreement. Okay, so this is a, a World Trade Agreement is where countries come together and then they try to uh, uh, come to a conclusion that what should be the minimum structure or the, is the skeletal structure of uh, uh, intellectual property rights that, I mean, the law that deals with intellectual property because unless there to a certain extent there is uniformity it may not be completely the same in every country but a certain level of uniformity is necessary otherwise every country will have its own law and then the purpose of having intellectual property rights itself will be defeated okay so this is the agreement on the uh, this uh, World Trade Agreement uh, passed an agreement that is uh, trade related aspects of intellectual property or in short it is called TRIPS which was signed by different countries in 1994. Now as we said in the beginning there are different types of intellectual property rights. So we will try to see what are those different types of intellectual property rights there are so many minor types okay but we will try to uh, see the main types only so what are the main types of intellectual property rights we have the first is the copyright which is of uh, more interest to us and we will be dealing in details about what is copyrights then we have the patents right rights then we have the design rights trademarks trade secrecy so these are basically the main types of intellectual property rights. Patent, design, trademarks are sometimes simply grouped together as industrial property rights as they are generally related to the uh, industries. Now, let us take up copyright. Copyright is a type of uh, IPR which protects, it deals with, uh, copyright deals with literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic work. So this type of work comes under copyrights. Okay. Uh, in most non-English speaking countries, they sometimes call copyright as author's right as well. And uh, since authors, as we said, uh, are basically normally the first uh, owner of uh, anything uh, or originator of the work. So it covers, copyright covers anything that is written down, including computer software, maps, drawings, illustration, photographs, plans, sculptures, and so on. Okay. So 
copyright consists of a whole series of exclusive rights. There are plenty of rights within the copyright itself. So they, these are, uh, you know, uh, uh, reproduction in any form. It includes uh, uh, the rights to reproduce, distribute, perform, broadcast, communicate um, uh, to the public, adaptation, translation, all of these things. How many have we mentioned? One, reproduction one, distribution two, performance three, broadcast four, communication to public five, adaptation six, uh, translation seven, about seven of them, uh, some main things uh, are included in the copyright. This includes the right to make copies of a work which covers making uh, digital as well as physical copies. That is where our digital library interest comes in. So if we want to make a digital copy, then we have to deal with copyright first. So it lasts for the, you know, how long does this uh, copyright last? Suppose there is an author, the authors own that copyright, let us assume that the author owns that copyright, then that copyright will last for the author's lifetime as long as he or she is alive, he or she will own that copyright and plus 50 to 70 years after the author died. That is how long the author, I mean, how long the copyright lasts. In India, uh, the general rule is that copyright lasts for 60 years. That is, uh, 60 years is counted from the death of the, suppose the author died yesterday, then from today, it will be counted and till 60 years, that particular uh, uh, intellectual property will be uh, with the author. Okay. So you might be wondering if the author dies and who claims the copyright. Now there are uh, laws of inheritance in our country. So who inherits the property of the disease of the author, the disease author? That is the person who is going to own this for the next 60 years. Okay. So patents. Patents protect original invention with industrial application. They are one of the strongest form of uh, intellectual property right. So this is an uh, exclusive right to exploit an invention for 20 years and to stop others from using or applying the patent, uh, uh, applying it, uh, using it or applying the patent process if they have produced same invention. Now patent is that, you know, sometimes uh, uh, scientists or industrial uh, researchers, you know, they come up with new inventions, uh, new inventions. These patents, particularly among scientists, are much more uh, popular uh, or, or it may be an industrial house as well also. So uh, they, they, they come up with new inventions, okay? Then they go to the patent office, they register it, and then for the next 20 years, and we are saying this 20 years uh, as an average, okay? Some, this also differs from country to country again. Now, for the next few years or 20 years, it will not be, no one can use it without the uh, consent of the person who registered it in, in their names, okay? So only after 20 years, that invention can be freely used independently use okay so suppose some an author has already uh, registered a particular invention a new author comes and then also try to register it there will be a comparison so if the second one is a copy of the first one he or she will not be allowed to register because it is only a copy of it okay so uh, patents have to be applied for it has to be applied for, a review process is there, and in the review process, uh, uh, the patent office will review it. If they find that there is novelty in it, okay, there is some novelty in the invention, then they grant the patent rights. Now, novelty means that it should be something new. Just going, I mean, just copying someone's work, which is already there, doesn't qualify to be a patent. So this is one of the most important aspects of uh, patent protection that 
the invention that is applied for uh, registration must be novel means it must be new so uh, this newness can be easily destroyed can easily be you know uh, destroyed that is why something new at least for the next few few years next decade or so the person who invent uh, should be able to profit out of it it's not that you know the person only will keep it and then will not be used at least if suppose somebody is inventing something probably a new pen so completely new pen then that particular pen design uh, if a company wants to mass produce that pen then at least for the next 20 years the person who designed or who invented new pen will have the benefit okay so that is the idea so it is important not to disclose these details in the scientific paper poster presentation or exhibition exhibition before an application is made for the patents suppose some you have new scientific findings and then you disclose in your research paper in some journals you will go for patent office it will no longer no longer be accepted or no longer be new because it's already published so librarians and library users should be aware that depositing materials uh, which contain details of invention in a digital library or institutional repository which is openly accessible will destroy the novelty that is where the uh, restriction comes in okay even if a member of an institution okay the person may be a member of an institution to which we have a digital library or institution then they upload something uh, uh, new and it is patented and the patent period is still there then as a library professional we should be careful that those things are not made openly accessible okay next is design rights the design of a product is important to its commercial success so as so it is uh, a type of IPR called design right. So it may be a fashion design, it may be an automobile design. Okay. So this protects the shape, configuration, pattern or ornament of an article to the extent that a new and have some individual character in it. Okay. So they usually, uh, uh, this requires a registration process after which the owner of the design has exclusive right to make, export, sell, produce uh, 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 by using that particular design. So the term of protection is uh, about 10 to 25 years depending upon in which country uh, it is registered. So this one is not after the death of the, uh, death of the designer, the owner. Even patent also is not after the death of the owner. Only copyright, 60 years plus, I mean, uh, uh, from the date of the, 60 years from the date of, death of the author. The patent is from the date of registration. Design right is also from the date of registration. Then we have trademarks. You know, trademarks are signs and symbols that somehow influence the uh, consumers right when we see a particular trademark we are uh, we, we believe in that you know over a long period of time these trademarks for example like tata or uh, adidas or uh, reebok okay for example in the fashion industry so these they have uh, their own trademarks so the moment we see these trademarks uh, as consumer, we started thinking, oh, if it is uh, Adidas, it must be reliable, it must be good for sports. If it is Tata, maybe, uh, I mean, the quality must be of a better uh, standard. Okay, so that kind of uh, mental registration or perception is there. Trademark carries those things. Now, the problem is that sometimes uh, uh, in the uh, black markets, okay, people reproduce those things using the trademarks of famous or well-established uh, in industries and then uh, they reproduce cheap ones so that way what happened is that uh, you know the uh, 
uh, it affects the market of the originals okay so that is why uh, trademarks is there or trade symbol is there they have the exclusive right to use it the owner of the trademark have exclusive right to use it and these also require registration and they can also prevent other from using it similar using similar marks or uh, uh, which might confuse a customer of the uh, public then the period of uh, protection varies uh, but the trademark can usually be renewed indefinitely or uh, on payment of corresponding fees then we have uh, trade secrets trade secrets are also protected by the law these can be uh, technical information such as uh, the mechanics of invention but can also be it can also be the secret of commercial information price list you know for example two competing vehicle manufacturers are going to come up with the same segment of i mean vehicles in the same segment so they will hold their price keep, they'll keep their price a secret until unless they find it okay now it is okay to release so these kind of these kind of uh, secrets have uh, uh, give the uh, uh, industries competitive advantages so that is why three secrets also uh, has to be safeguarded it comes under intellectual property rights now let us come to managing intellectual property rights everyone involved in the process of communicating uh, scholarly information and research have to needs to have some kind of permission from the right owners to publish or include anything protected by the ipr so that is why ipr is an essential management of ipr is an essential part of uh, uh, building digital library collections so this process uh, in, involve uh, you know the first thing is that we have to find out who owns that who owns the intellectual property rights and then uh, uh, then we come to the allocating the necessary rights to the different parties involved enable them to do what is required who owns it after identifying who owns it we procure the right from them and then uh, what are the rights that comes with it and what are the restriction that comes with it so we also are responsible to see to it that those who use it do not uh do, do not go against the interest of the right holders or do not go against the uh, the right which is em, uh, embodied in the product so the detailed process uh, followed by where i mean various library depends on the type of digital collection that we are creating so when digitizing material you will first need to clarify the status of its item determining whether it is still protected under ipr if it is protected then we have to find out who the holder is we have to contact the holder the uh, ipr holder for permission to include in our digital library so without that permission the written and signed permission we will not be allowed to include in our digital library now third party materials some items that are put in our collection may include materials where the copyright is owned by someone other than the uh, owner of the IPR of the main items this uh, known as third party materials you will need permission from the owner if it is not the creator then owned by someone the creator has transferred it to someone else so you can you have to take it from that third party whoever is you uh, have to get the permission from them alternatively a guarantee from the depositor that they have the permission of the third party owner can be provided okay so we should keep a record of a request made for permission uh, because in the process you know if we keep track of a record of permission for every copyright uh, procurement process and in the long run it helps so the activities we take we have taken to determine who is the right owner what was the process of determining the right owner how do we finally identify or can can contact the right owner then the activity yeah how do we contact them by phone by mail okay the or by letter by post the the response from the right owner what are the uh, responses where do we pay fees as part of the agreement to use the word then the duration of the agreement to use how long they allow us to use it 
details about who will have access to the digital version based on the agreement who is allowed or how many times it is allowed to be used this is becoming one of the things if it can be converted in digital format okay whether the right that we procure from the right owner allow us to convert into digital format okay so uh wherever you are providing an institutional repository you will need permission from the ip right uh, ipr owner to do the uh, to store to organize and to make to manage your repository to me i mean to make it as part of your repository collection you need the permission of the ipr owner this can be done with a deposit license which is a standard agreement between the person and uh, person depositing material in the repository and the institution running it okay so it gives the permission repository the permission to make copies of the work and distribute them through the internet as well uh, to do what is necessary to preserve the work so uh, as well as license from ipr owners depositors it is useful to provide users of a digital collection with a clear statement that every item a clear statement of what is allowed to do on these materials now today i mean when you are even searching on the internet or for you using google search engine then uh, suppose you are looking for photographs then you will see that in the tools that there are some different types of rights creative common rights or some other rights okay so based on those rights but that photograph image that you are downloading what does uh what how does it, i mean which right is there can how can it be used all of those things are there okay so this is the end user or the reuse license so we have to be careful that it has to be used accordingly otherwise the person who uses uh, end user license uh, is violated then the person who uses can be prosecuted so it states that uh, the right that this end user license states that end user has to down, uh, download material inform them of any restriction that right holders have placed on the material so they can, so in some cases they may not be allowed to download if they are allowed to download they may not be allowed to make copies or that kind of a thing they needs to be informed to the end users so publishers also need to be allocated rights by the ipr uh, holders in order to carry out the business of the publishing in the past these uh, publishers have dealt with this by uh, requiring authors to transfer all rights to them you know this they what do you call them sub publishers that the author has no right at all the moment they get it published this has been a common practice and uh, this practice is still continuing then the publish the publisher becomes the owner the author is no longer the owner and uh, the publisher controls with uh, whatever they have to do this cause problems when the author wants to change something for example i have written a, uh, an article for example in future i want to change something okay but i have already given the full uh, uh, i mean the rights to the uh, to the uh, publisher now i have no rights i cannot do anything with it so there cannot be any improvement on the work so that work uh, willingly or unwillingly has to be abandoned okay that problem is there and then if the author wants to put it in an institutional repository they cannot do so because all right has been surrendered to the publisher now how to avoid these problems the way uh, is to encourage author not to sign agreement with transfer ship uh, transfer owner of ipr that complete transfer of ownership should not be signed the authors should, and the publishers should be given given the right to publish to distribute okay instead of uh making them retain ownership only give them the permission to publish okay license to publish so a number of initiative have been developed to provide a model license which balance the need of the publisher and the author and enable the author to uh, allocate rights appropriately so which uh, respectable uh, publishers have uh, uh, some i mean have i mean incorporated uh, some aspects of this and then allow the authors also to have some rights in the work they have submitted okay 
So in short, uh, what we had discussed was that intellectual properties, uh, uh, property rights are the area of law which controls and protects the, uh, the products of intellectual and creativity. So IPR covers different types of property. Uh, copyright is the most relevant or important for digital libraries and institution repository. So IPR content of digital library has to be managed so that the rights and permissions uh, of different parties are not violated. So these can be done through a series of licenses and agreements to with, uh, which is held by the, I mean, uh, with the IPR holders. So for further information, I would advise you to go through this website, uh, copyright.gov.in. And uh, here the link provided is about a handbook on copyright. So you can see what are the nitty gritty the details about this copyright from this link. Okay, we have come to the end of uh, today's class. Stay safe, stay healthy.